I think I'd want to tell myself not to be, not to be so angry, you know, okay. and, 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 and upset, you know, if I was telling myself, having, knowing who I was then, uh, you know, in today's climate with the internet and the social media and, you know, the Snapchat, and Instagram, I would want to tell myself it's that John Wooden quote, you know, about being more concerned with your, with your character than with your reputation, because your character is who you really are. And your reputation is, is just what other people think about you. But there's so much going on just thinking about people thinking about, you know, them think about what they think about you you know, or how people perceive you. And I just say, be more concerned about your character. I mean, it's hard, right? It's hard to take that advice. It's hard for a young person to hear that and put it into their lives. It's hard for an older person. You know, I get, for us older people, we're on Facebook, you know, we look at Facebook and, and we're on that. And sometimes you're like, you see things, it's easy to think, oh, that's everybody living their best life. You know, people put a lot of the glamorous stuff out there, their best things that are going on. But you know, everybody's got something that they're hurting about. Everybody's got challenges and things. You don't always see it or you don't always know it or people aren't always vulnerable, but even as adults, we know that. So I just think for this generation, and that's part of why you see, I think the increased rates of, you know, mental health concerns and suicide ideation, that there is so much of this um, superficial, superficial, shallow communication. Yeah. You know, there's superficial, shallow communication. And, and it's hard because it's just these little snaps or these little pictures, but they don't go deep with each other. And, and you need the deep relationships, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, me and Cece, right? I mean, we were friends, you know, yeah. thick, thin, bad, you know, good. <laughs> we were friends and we had each other's backs. And, you know, there's something about cultivating that with people that we need, you know, yeah. and that that's part of the human element. I think with COVID, you know, now it's harder, you know, with all the racial unrest, people don't, people don't want to trust other people in the same way sometimes. Right. And and we know we don't want to judge people by their skin color or different things, but it's hard because there's a lot of images and a lot of history and a lot of things Mm -hmm. that press upon us uh, to make people want to think that that's what, you know, that they're going to do. And it's, it's, it's just hard. It's so, so hard that there's so much hate, yeah. which is maybe why I would even more so want to stress that point that it's easy to then be angry, right? Because of injustice or hate or mm-hmm. ways that people, pe- people think things aren't fair. So try not to have that level of anger to my own young self. And whether that is anger directed at others or anger directed back at myself. Wow. That's good stuff. And what you said was super profound to define there is a difference between character and reputation. And one, you know, is who you are, not who they think you are and being a bit, man, that's good stuff. Okay, now, Dr. Mortis, when y'all were young, I always knew you were gonna do okay. You stayed undercover if you did stuff. I never did see it. So I thought he's gonna either be a real estate broker or a tax preparer person in charge of something. No. I just knew it because you was just you were always watching, but you didn't let it be known what was on the inside by your outside mannerable watching. And I would have never thought that any butter would melt on you because you're just so calm. Oh. Never, I mean, that's how I saw you because I've seen a group of folks no. and you were one. I thought, oh, he's going to be a businessman and, and sell real estate. So when you were in college, your first year as a freshman, what did you think? Uh, did you even think you would be in the position you are now? Because Joy no. was trying to explain to me. Let me tell you this. And I no. thought it was so precious. I still didn't understand. When she had a job there at U of L for a minute, she came and she said, Mama, I saw Mike Morris. I said, oh, that's precious. I thought, well, he's got a business job out there because she's in the something, something. I said, oh, I'll tell him. I said, hi. And then later, she kept saying, mom, nah, nah, nah. so did you ever think when you was a freshman that you would be in a strategic position that you are now? And I still don't understand. I Facebooked you last night to okay. try to figure out what you do because I still don't got it. But it was all nice stuff and helping people. So did you have any idea or thoughts about when I grow up or when I get out of college, what was your thoughts? No, 
no, no, no. The freshman, I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. And actually, and this isn't a good example because we want students to try and figure it out early, but I changed my major five different times. So I kind of bounced around from business, uh, political science. I thought maybe I'd be an attorney at one point in time, uh, communication, sport administration. I thought about being an athletic director because I always enjoyed sports and stuff. Thought about going and working in athletics or something in higher education which is kind of a path I was on uh, for a period of time. I got my undergraduate degree in sport administration, and that was kind of the path I was going to go on. But then I found out more about working in higher education, and I always enjoyed that. I really enjoyed my college experience at UofL. I was an involved student, was active on campus, and I enjoyed the college environment. And I thought working with young people and helping them, you know, to be able to go and aspire to achieve what they want to achieve, that would be really rewarding, you know. And so there was a part of me that wanted that thought about pursuing that business path but you know the 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 meaningful work that I do at U of L I think has a much um you know I'm really impacting the next generation yes. you know yes. and I'm meeting young people it keeps me young uh, in many ways because I'm learning early you know okay what's Twitter I remember when it's first coming out what's Twitter and ask us <laughs> what do you think about this what do you think about Snapchat or Instagram or you know it keeps me young being around the students and finding out what's, you know, what's going on in their lives and helping to, to be a part of that. Uh, but no, I never would, would have thought that I would have been in this position. And even when I started advancing in the field and in higher education, you know, I wouldn't have thought that I'd have been back at Dean of Students in the period of time and be able to be, I've been in, I've been the Dean of Students at UofL now for 13 years. Wow. So it kind of really sneaks up on you. And I've been a dean now because I was at Radford University in Virginia. I was there for six years, five out of I was the dean. So I've done that now for 18 years. So when you, I think about that, it's like, I must be really old because <laughs> you think somebody's been a dean for 18 years. You're like, that's an old person. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that caught up with me. <laughs> but that's all right. You wear it well. No, I'm kidding. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know when I realized something, it was used on TV about something because Joy was living here at that time. Yeah. And I said, Joy, they got Mike on, Dr. Mike. Well, I didn't know. I said, girl, come look at him. He done grew up. He's an old, <laughs> not an old man, an older man. Because you don't see it. And she just shook her head and left the room. Because I think <laughs> she probably was trying to explain to me. But let me ask you this. Now, this was deep. I found out after your father passed. Mm-hmm. I don't remember how long ago it was. But that funeral was the most spiritual funeral I think I've ever attended. And that's when I heard, if I could only imagine, and I was arrested there sobbing, I mean, just sobbing. And I thought, it's something about this church or this man or this family. And then later on, I found out, I don't know, C told me that you were a deacon or something. So how did you realize that you had this servant heart even to help on your Facebook page, you're helping people and encouraging people and serving. So when did you realize you had that type of servant heart? You know, the Bible say, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I just ask him to create in me a clean heart. Oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, I'm not no preacher or anything, but it's all about purifying your body, keeping your heart clean, keeping your heart pure. Thank you, God, for keeping a clean heart in me. I ask for your blessing. Kings all time creator, he can get you through whatever. He the only one can save you, never leave you, never stray you. Always kept food on my table, keep my heart pure. This my prayer, lead me so I can obey you. Get off.